come to you with some prayer requests, some serious prayer requests. Amen. Uh, let's remember Brother Ronnie. He's, he's back in the hospital with uh, an infection. Uh, Sister Melissa's mom, uh, Sister Julie's uncle, Sister Christine's mom. Um, needs that uh, we need to bring before the Lord. Um, little Savannah, she visited us at church, and um, she passed away last week, and we want to remember the family of Little Savannah. Um, let's remember Tommy Dupree, um, he, his family in Louisiana. His homegoing service is uh, this weekend, and so remember his family. Uh, Darla Tovor is a home missionary's wife. Uh, the Dramas is new in Maryland, and now live in Dallas, Texas. She has COVID and uh, needs prayer. Amen. Uh, Pastor Tommy Foster of Dallas First Church, uh, Dallas Church and Hospital, extremely ill with COVID. His and his family, um, his wife, and uh, many members of his church are also sick with the virus. And so let's remember uh, the, the, the Fosters and uh, the First Church, uh, Dallas First Church. Amen. Let's uh, remember a minister, uh, George Gee in uh, De Quincey, Louisiana, um, needs a miracle. He was put on a ventilator yesterday with COVID, and uh, doctors are not thinking he'll make it. So, uh, Let's remember him, amen. And uh, let's remember Pastor uh, Jerry Dean in Bossier City, Louisiana, who preached our PA camp a few years ago. He's been diagnosed with um, very uh, aggressive prostate cancer. He and uh, Sister Dean went to Dallas, Texas this past week for uh, pre-surgery testing, and uh, both were tested for COVID. She tested positive, um, and her prayer request is that he'll come um, back negative with the test and that, um, uh, that he can have his surgery, amen. Uh, Paige has a requested prayer for her brother's pastor and um, wife and uh, several members of the church, including her sister-in-law in McLean, Mississippi, um, who will all have um, uh, COVID. And, um, and let's pray for our country. Amen. Let's pray for uh, you know the, this virus and uh, the violence and the civil unrest and that God's Spirit would just come in and give us a peace and a calm in our country. Amen. And um, also we can remember uh, my dad. And um, my sister Sue actually have a good praise report as we get ready to get a prayer here. Um, she had some surgery today. Uh, surgery went well. She's out of surgery and doing well. And um, just want to just want to remember her. Amen. And um, so let's uh, let's remember these things in prayer. Uh, and um, you know, and again, our country. We just got to lift this up. Amen. So let's go before the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we praise you. We love you, Lord. Lord, we brought many requests before you, God. Lord, those sick with COVID, Lord God. Those sick with cancer, Lord God. Those recovering from surgery, Lord God. Lord, reach down, God. Touch them, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, open doors where doors need open. And Lord God, we pray, Lord, you'd heal bodies. Deliver people, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We trust in you. You are a great I am. Hallelujah. You are the one that provides and brings the miracle. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, every one of these needs, Lord God, reach down and touch them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Heal bodies. Touch minds, Lord. Lord, we need you, God. Be with families that have lost loved ones, Jesus. Lord, you are the comforter, Lord. And we're coming to you right now, Jesus. Lord, I pray right now, God, for our church, Lord. Lord, grow our church. Save these cities. Lord, we're praying, Lord, you'd reach down, God. And Mature your people. Bless and increase our finances. Give us a bigger and better building. Lord, we're praying for harvesters in the field. Labors, Lord God. Send with a hungry heart, Lord God, for lost souls, for people, Lord. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We trust in you for this. Lord, we're praying for pastor's message tonight, Lord God. Lord, reach down, God. Let us receive the word tonight, Lord. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Um, a couple quick announcements to run through. Uh, don't forget, tomorrow is the day of prayer and fasting. Uh, Sunday, uh, service at Penn State Hazleton at 11 o'clock a.m., so be at Penn State at 11 a.m. And uh, Sunday afternoon, 4 p.m. at the YMCA um, in the Y parking lot. Um, right there, we're going to have a, a parking lot service in the YMCA again. Amen. Um, and the parking lot of Tamaqua. And um, men, don't forget, we have about four weeks to uh, send in our apostolic man offering. So I'm encouraging you. I'm asking you to bind with me. Let's come together and let's bless the kingdom of God. Amen. Uh, don't forget to continue to send in tithes and offerings. Um, don't forget about building fund and global missions. Amen. These missionaries are out there. They're still doing their, they're still doing uh, the work of God, what they were called to do in a, in a foreign field. Amen. And um, so let's remember to send in our missions offerings too. Um, you can do that through PayPal, through mail, and um, it'll be a blessing to the church and it'll be a blessing to those that, uh, that um, need it for the, the missions. Amen. So God bless you all. God bless.
So good to be with you this evening. Amen. Pastor loves you, Sister Dreamus, and I love each and every one of you. Um, so many things to pray about. I want to say thank you, Brother Ron, for all of those prayers and the announcements. And um, don't forget, prayer before our service begins um, in your home from my office and then prayer afterwards. And uh, don't, don't be intimidated to slow down and take the time to pray. So many things to pray about. Apostolic, Apostolic Pentecostals, we pray. Praise God. Would you extend your hands in prayer before Pastor gets started? Father, we love you. <laughs> we worship you. We praise your wonderful name. We're asking you to meet with us tonight. God, talk to us. Speak to us. Direct us. Our hearts are open. Our minds are open. We will do what you tell us to do. And everybody say, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. I'm teaching tonight on whoever says I'm praying too much. Whoever says that. I am praying too much. Uh, who can say that? So I want to talk to you somewhere in those lines. I feel like the Lord's led me to do this. First Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 17 through 19. Number 17, pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Pray without ceasing. And I couldn't leave verse 19 out. Quench not the Spirit. Prayer is often our last <laughs> resort the final step in a hopeless situation when, when most people have done all they can do and they've contacted all the people they can contact and they've went through all of their resources of important uh, influential people then they resort to prayer shouldn't be the last thing we refer to it with such phrases as he doesn't have a prayer, meaning he ain't got nothing left. He doesn't have a prayer. Or there's nothing left to do now but pray. And when there's, when everything is done, prayer should have been first. And when there's nothing left, prayer should be last. Start with prayer, end with prayer. But it is perhaps, prayer is perhaps the most important aspect of our human condition. Now, we share many attributes with the animal kingdom, including instincts for hunger, uh, productivity, and survival. But listen to this. Animals provide care and nurture for their young. They do. Some construct elaborate shelters, whether it's in nests, caves, or tunnels. They construct it themselves. Many have complex social systems that they work with. And they live with, but no other creation has the capacity to communicate with the Creator and to pray. No other one. Only mankind is endowed with that awesome, incredible gift to talk, to talk with their Creator. I have never met anyone, I have never met anyone who complain that they pray too much. Are you, are you with me? Have you ever met someone say, I pray too much? But I have known people that would say, I wished I had prayed more. Hmm? I wished I had prayed more. In our most desperate circumstances and in our finest moments, we cry out, we cry out to God in prayer. Pentecostal apostolics believe no matter what the situation. If it's great, pray. If it's not great, pray. The greatest gift, I believe this with all my heart, the greatest gift that we can bestow upon another human being is to pray earnestly for them. And can I remind you, texting somebody, praying for you, is not praying for them. It's a great it's, it's an incredible gesture. But if you text them that you're praying for them, it's great to do that. 
And we're humans. I know it's easy uh, to let it slip for a lot of people. But it, when we are really earnestly praying for somebody, it's incredible. You're giving them something that money cannot buy. Some, some people understand prayer as only a mental exercise merely benefiting the one who prays. That, that some people think that's about as far as prayer go. It, if I pray for you, I'm, I'm the one getting the blessing. But the scripture affirms that there is more at work when we pray than we imagine. I believe that to be so. Watch this. Let me ask you a question. What are the five best toys of all time? Five best toys of all time. Number one, a stick, a box, a string, a cardboard tube, and dirt. Five best toys of all time. All are readily available, versatile, appropriate for all ages, <laughs> fits every budget, and are powered by imagination. Are you with me? Powered by imagination. No, you do not need batteries. You don't need batteries for a stick. You don't need batteries for a box, a string, a cardboard tube, or dirt. All you need is imagination. Imagination plays a powerful role in our lives. So it's not unusual that the Apostle Paul mentioned it in his prayer for the followers of Jesus in Ephesus. After asking God to strengthen them with his power through his spirit, Paul prayed that they would be able to grasp and experience the full dimension of the love of God. That they would be able to comprehend and get a hold of the full dimension of the love of God. In closing, Paul gave glory to him who is able to do exceedingly more than we are able to imagine. Now we're talking about people that no one ever says, nobody ever will say that I can imagine. Hello? I pray too much. What do we do? We need to pray and have imagination. We need to pray and believe God for exploits. No one ever says I pray too much. And no one ever says I believe God too much. I trust the Lord too much. I'm too, I've got too much confidence in God. No. We need to have confidence in God. Most of the time our experiences are limited our experiences limits prayer most of the time. What we have experienced, if we're not careful, our experiences in through our life limits our prayers. A situation we cannot picture being different. It's going to be that way always. No, 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 no. It'll never change. Not true, not true. Nothing it can ever touch it and ever move it. No, not true whatsoever. Destructive habits that remain unbroken. I cannot get over this habit. I cannot get through this habit. I have repented, repented. Nope, 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 nope. You have not repented. Repentance means stopping, turning around, going the opposite way. Repentance doesn't mean I'm sorry for doing this, God, but I'm going to keep doing it. That's not repentance. Repentance is not feeling sorry for yourself and telling God, I don't know what I'm going to do about me. Repentance is, a, yes, that's great to expose yourself. It's good to tell God about everything, concluding yourself. But repentance now, remember, repentance is an about face. So when we think that there's things that will never change and we think there's habits that will never, ever be conquered, Paul is going to say, no, that's not true. Long-held attitudes that seems to defy change. Attitudes. That's some of our biggest problems, is those attitudes that we, we just don't, 
Now, some of you have got those attitudes because there are people that expects you to have those attitudes. And God expects you to allow him to help you with those attitudes. And the reason why there's never be going to be somebody that says, I pray too much, is because we've got too much. we got much for God to help us in with our own self. As time passes, we may begin to feel that some things cannot be changed. This is why we do need to pray without ceasing. This is why we as humans, it is imperative that we, of all of God's creation, we are the creation, we are what God has created in His image and His likeness, and we need to be victorious over the things that brings us lower than what we should be living. I kind of felt this word throughout the day. I didn't, I haven't used it on such a dream as much, and... It's a word that is used quite a bit. Matter of fact, you see it in grocery stores if you shop at one that has it, and it's called organic. And you know, and I got to thinking about being organic. And this, there are just some things that is not organic because of the things that people put on it and spray on it and allow it to grow. With a matter of fact, they won't deem it organic if it's too close to some things that can get from what those things are to where the organic field is supposed to be growing. We, we don't, listen, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. We are supposed to be able to have, and this is why it's imperative to pray without ceasing. This is why it is imperative that we quench not the Spirit. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. This is imperative because we need to have an organic relationship with Jesus Christ uncontaminated by the things of this world. Paul says all of these things, I, it can't change. I can't change. It won't go away. Nothing can make it move. Paul says this is not true. By God's mighty power working in us, he is able, God is able to do far more than we may dare to ask or even dream of. He's able to do more than we can imagine. What does a stick need? Imagination. What does a string need? Imagination. But it needs someone to focus on it. It needs something. It needs a kid or an adult. May not hurt for some of us adults to go back and play with some dirt. And play with some cardboard tubes. Jesus prayed. He did. In fact, he rose up early in the morning before sunrise and sought solitary places where he could spend time alone in prayer, knowing the incredible power and knowing the strength that prayer gives you. Occasionally, he prayed all night. Been there. He told us to pray, not as a public display, to impress others, that's not what it's about. But in secret, if you please, where your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. What you do in study, what you do in prayer, what you do in your homes when the door and, and, the, and the drapes are pulled. Your relationship, your prayer life that ceases not. The life you live in front of your children. The life you live with in front of your companion. He taught us to pray constantly with discipline and determination. Oh, I believe in that. I believe in that with all my heart. His prayer life was so powerful that his disciples asked him to teach them to pray. We've talked about that in the lesson. Prayer is not a matter of reciting particular words or repeating religious rituals. That's not prayer. Prayer comes from the heart. The, from, from the heart, the mouth speaketh. Prayer comes in. And pastor, why are you talking about prayer? We need to pray. America needs us to pray. Our county needs us. Our cities need us to pray. God looks on the heart. He hears the person who is convicted of guilt and feels unworthy. Remember the guy, there's two men praying. 
once bent down, bent over, beating himself on the chest, will not even look toward heaven. I'm a sinner. And then there's one standing there. I'm glad I'm not like him, God. I'm glad that I'm the way I am. Well, the Lord said the one that went home blessed is a guy that wouldn't even look toward heaven. Ask God, forgive me, I'm a sinner. God, I'm pastor of Apost Apostolic Faith Church, and I need help. God, I, I, I'm the pastor. If anybody's going to pray, I need to pray. Lord, I'm the pastor. If anybody needs a touch, needs a divine deliverance, I want to experience it for Christ's sake. Lord, touch my wife, touch my home, touch our, our families. Lord, I'm asking you and Jesus, now, hey, you need to let God, God, I'm the husband, I'm the wife, and I know, God, that I've got some struggles going on. And, and, and you need to pray without ceasing until you win some battles, until you get some attitudes out, until you attack some situation that thinks and feels like, and they've got the idea that they're there for life. Get a hold of God and get them out and get through it and win this victory, win that battle and get ready for another one because you're triumphant. You're credible. You're awesome. You're God's people, people of the name. God hears those who humbly seek to do his will. He hears them. The affected prayer of a righteous person the Bible says can accomplish much and will accomplish much. Listen, the mystery and the miracle of prayer resides not in us, not just in us, but in the one who created us and created the vast universe that we have only begun to explore. The one that we, pro that we are praying to is where the power comes from. The one that we believe in and we're praying to is where the power comes from. The one that, I'm going to say it like this, that we are having a conversation with. You say, I, I live alone, I'm all by myself. No, you're not. you got a creator. you got a heavenly father. you you got God. The presence of the Lord Jesus is with you. Talk to him. Encounter him. Go to Him with situations. And when you get done talking to Him, be sure to stop. Stay there and let Him talk back. Because He will. We're not mechanisms in an accidental machine that grinds its way toward annihilation. We're not. We're not headed for loss. We're not headed for doom. You're not going to live for God and then go to hell. You're not going to you're not going to endure. Somebody help me. He that endures to the end shall be saved. I want the devil to hear me say that to God's people. You're not going to endure to the end and be lost. You're going to endure. He that endured to the end shall be saved. We are created in the image of God. And our very nature hungers for his presence. It is normal. It's natural. It's organic. <laughs> organic. He has endowed us with personality, intelligence, and freedom. He wants to talk with us. Oh, let me have a little talk with Jesus. I'm going to tell him all about our troubles. He wants to talk with us. Never heard anything. Anyone say that I talk to God too much? Dude, I want you to know I just talk to God too much. He desires our company. He listens and he invites us to talk to him, to pray. I want to read you something in closing. I just have to. I just never heard no one say I pray too much. I talk to God too much. I've heard people say, I wish I'd have talked to God more. I wish I'd believed God more. I wish I'd have turned my attitude around. I, 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 I don't believe there's nothing that God can't do. I don't believe there's nothing. Ask, the Lord Jesus said, ask. And it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, 
and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives, and he who seeks, finds, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, when his son asked for a loaf of bread, will he give him a stone? Are you kidding me? No one. Or, or if he asks for a fish, will he, will he give him a snake when he's wanting a fish? Uh-uh. If you then, being earthly, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father who is in heaven will give, uh, listen, listen, who is in heaven? It's a heavenly thing that's blessing the earth. Your Father who is in heaven, give what is good to those who ask Him, who pray to Him, who seeks Him constantly without ceasing and without quenching the Spirit. The Lord will not turn His back on you. He will not turn his face away from you. He will bless your family. He will bless your children. Your children will be blessed because mom and dad's got a, a non-ceasing prayer life. Your children will be blessed when they get older. They'll know more. They'll understand more. They have more perception. The devil will know that they're not an easy take at all because there was a mom and dad that had a prayer life. A non-ceasing, unceasing. And they did not quench the spirit. Father, we love you. We thank you. I hope, God, I pray I said something that encourages and helps each and every family, everybody under the sound of my voice. If there's people that needs to repent, God, help them to repent. Those that need to be baptized in Jesus' name, God, help them to seek you to repent and be baptized. Those, God, that are a little distant, God, those that are struggling, there are people, God, that are hurting, and they're trying, God, to get a steady stand, a foundational stand, a balance in this crazy thing that we're dealing with. I'm asking you to help them, strengthen them, and bless them. We need you. God, we've, we repent for not having a prayer that never ceases. We repent for quenching the Spirit. Help us, God. We want to do better and we want to do more. And we're asking you, Lord, in Jesus' name. God, it's my prayer. You've talked to me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to say it. it's been a long time since I've said it. It's been announced. Your pastor is praying that God put somebody in your path. God put someone in your path. No matter, I, I, don't, I don't know how he's going to do it. God don't need us to tell him how to do it. He needs us to tell him we're committed to doing it with him. That he'll put somebody in our path that we can be anointed on and be a blessing to. Your hands are anointed. The words of your mouth is anointed. God bless you in the wonderful name of Jesus. Don't forget tomorrow night. I'm sorry, tomorrow. Don't forget tomorrow, Thursday. Special prayer and fasting. We need to do it. Um, I'm going to have Brother Run to announce. I'm not doing it right now, but we're going to start doing it two days a week, Monday and Thursday. But this week, tomorrow, special prayer and fasting. God bless you in Jesus' name. Love you.